Uh, this is a meeting of the city of Newberry, Florida, uh, special magistrate hearings for code enforcement. Uh, it is, the date is August 7, 2018, and it is 1 p.m. Um, first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance, so if y'all would stand and join. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, as I stated, this is a, uh, the special magistrate hearings for code enforcement. Just to describe for those uh, that are not uh, familiar with the procedure, uh, the, first of all, the, the purpose of, the, um, of these hearings uh, are to enforce codes of the city uh, as have been cited and uh, noticed and brought to uh, this hearing by the code enforcement department of the city. Uh, we will follow the procedure um, as follows. For each case, uh, I'll ask the clerk to introduce the case. Um, I will determine if there's a respondent or a representative of the respondent present for the case. Uh, I will ask the clerk to swear in all witnesses, uh, which will include the uh, code enforcement officer and any other city um, person that might uh, present on behalf of the city. Uh, I will do that one time for uh, the code enforcement officer at the first case, and that uh, oath will will last through the um, through the rest of the hearings. Uh, I will then uh, call on the city code officer uh, to present the case on behalf of the city. Uh, once that is complete, I will ask the respondent or any representative of the uh, respondent who has been sworn in to present any relevant testimony or defenses. Uh, to the citation that has been brought. Uh, i just let you know that at any time during the testimony of either the city or uh, the respondent, uh, I may ask questions um, for clarification at any point in time. Um, following, uh, following everybody having their say, uh, I will render a decision. Uh, my decision will be, the first part of the decision will be uh, whether I've determined based on the evidence uh, presented that there is a violation of the code provision that has been cited. Uh, the second part of my decision will be if the first part is yes, uh, then I will consider uh, possible uh, fines, uh, imposing costs, uh, an order for the payment of cost of the proceeding and any possible remedies. And I will generally defer to the request of the city's code enforcement officer as to uh, what those um, possibilities may be. Uh, so with that, are there any questions? Okay, then um, the next item on the agenda is if there are any remarks of uh, city staff or attorneys. Seeing none, then we will proceed to the new business section of the agenda. And if the clerk will call the first case. Case number CE 2018-004, violation number 2018-03010, City of Newberry, Florida versus Picard and Trader. Uh, okay, are there any, uh, is there anybody here on behalf of the owner Picard and Trader? Okay, uh, do, do both of y'all intend to give testimony? Yes, okay. If y'all would stand with the, with the code enforcement officer, and uh, Madam Clerk, if you will administer the oath. Okay, different oath first. I'll, they can all go at once. Okay. Do, do. <laughs> okay. do you swear or affirm that the, that the testimony you are about to give in these cases today will be the truth and the whole truth? I do. Okay, before you, before you sit down, would each of you identify yourself? I'm James Schrader. And just, to, just for clarity, y'all are the owners of, of this property, yes, of the subject property. Okay, thank you. You may proceed. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. My name is Rick Wolf, and I'm the Code Enforcement Officer for the City of Newberry, and I have been uh, sworn. My credentials are on file with the uh, uh, Clerk of the Magistrate. 
Uh, the first case is CEB 2018-004, and the response, uh, responsible parties or respondents are Picard and Schrader. The photographs being presented into evidence today accurately represent the violation as seen and, and were taken on uh, uh, the, the dates as indicated in the photographs by myself. On the fourth day of March 2018, the City of Newberry Code Enforcement Office received an anonymous complaint um, of unregistered abandoned school buses, a fire truck, and other abandoned vehicles on the property located at the southeast corner of West Newberry Road and the Southwest 186th Avenue on tax parcel 04371-003-0001. Uh, other complaints had also been received in the past uh, regarding this property with no corrective action taken. The property was inspected by me on the 7th of March, 2018, on May the 23rd, 2018, on July 10th, 2018, July 11th, 2018, and this morning, August 7th, 2018, and was found to be in the unincorporated, excuse me, in the incorporated city limits of the city of Newberry and in violation of the City of Newberry Code of Ordinances. Specifically, Chapter 14 of Article 6, Section 14-331 through 334, uh, which is entitled in dangerous, dangerous Lands and Hazardous Land, excuse me, Dangerous Buildings and Hazardous Land, Section 334, provides that creating, keeping, maintaining, allowing the existence of dangerous or hazardous lands is unlawful and it shall be unlawful for the owner of the real property within the city to create, keep, maintain, or allow the existence of any dangerous building or hazardous land as defined in the article uh, or, in, uh, or on such real property. Hazardous lands shall mean lands that are unoccupied as well as occupied upon which there exist a condition or conditions dangerous to health, welfare, or safety, or the public generally, or the occupants of surrounding properties or the occupants of such lands, including, but not limited to, land upon which there exists an accumulation of materials or items stored outside a structure, including, but not limited to, lumber tires, automobile parts, trash, hazardous waste, abandoned personal property, unusable or discarded household items, inoperative or discarded machinery or equipment, inoperative vehicles or appliances, solid waste, dangerous chemicals, explosives, or other hazardous substance without sufficient protections for the control of same, junk, use, used scrap, construction or demolition materials, tanks, drums, glass, iron, or any other materials or items that may include, uh, create uh, noxious odors or harmful fumes or serve as a breeding or nesting ground for mosquitoes, rats, mice, uh, poisonous snakes, dangerous wild animals, or insect vermin in such manner as to uh, the extent to pose or immediate danger, to pose an immediate danger to the public health and safety, or to contribute to any other unsafe or unsanitary conditions, or create a dangerous nuisance uh, attractive to children, or to create a fire safety or health hazard. So that's chapter 14 relating to hazardous lands. Chapter 94, Article 4, uh, is with regard to st stopping, standing, and parking. Uh, section 94-94, entitled Additional Parking Prohibitions, it shall be unlawful for any person to park or leave standing and or shall be unlawful for the registered owner of any vehicle to park or leave standing or to permit another to park or leave standing any vehicle. For the purposes of or displaying advertising for the purpose of storage or as junkage or dead storage for more than a period of 24 hours. Article, uh, chapter 94, article five states that abandoned vehicles, section 94-122 are prohibited. No person shall abandon any vehicle within the city or no person shall leave any vehicle at any place within the city for such time and under such circumstances as to cause such vehicles reasonably to appear to have been abandoned. In Chapter 94, Article 5, Abandoned Vehicles, Section 94-124, uh, 
talks about wrecked or inoperative vehicles or private proper, on private property. No person in charge or in control of a property within the city, whether as owner, tenant, occupant, leasee, or otherwise, shall allow any partially dismantled, uh, non-operating, wrecked, junk, or discarded vehicle to remain on such property longer than a period of 72 hours. And no person shall leave any such vehicle on the property with the city, within the city for longer time than 72 hours, except that this article shall not apply with regard to a vehicle in an enclosed building, a vehicle on premises of a business enterprise operated in a lawful place and manner when necessary to the operation of such business enterprise, or a vehicle in the appropriate storage place or depository maintained in a lawful place and manner by the city. Uh, in addition, Appendix B, Land Development Regulations, Article 4, uh, in the Zoning Regulations, Section 4.2.20.4, uh, discusses prohibited signs. It shall be a violation of these land development regulations to erect, place, or maintain, and a Part J of that provision is portable signs. Except A-frame signs is permitted by Section 4.2.20.10, or a sign without a commercial message. Um, in Appendix B, Land Development Regulations Article 2, we find the definition for a portable sign. A portable sign is any sign not permanently attached to the ground or a permanent structure or a sign designed to be transported, including but not limited to signs designed to be transported by means of wheels, signs made as A-frames or T-frames, menu and sandwich board signs, Balloons used as signs, umbrellas used for commercial message, and signs attached to or painted on vehicles parked and visible from the public right-of-way, unless said sign is used in the normal day-to-day -day operations of the business. Your Honor, the subject property contains several vehicles, including a parked school, bus, parked school buses, an unlicensed fire truck, and unlicensed uh, buses b uh, being used for advertising, tractor trailers, an abandoned car and boat, appliances, tractor tires, and piles of debris creating a hazardous condition. Vehicles with advertising are defined as portable signs and are prohibited. Vehicles that are unlicensed or improperly parked on st on the, or stored are prohibited, and items on the property that are creating a hazardous or unsafe condition are also uh, prohibited. Your Honor, this property is zoned agriculture and is approximately 9.9 .9 acres, 9.99 acres in size, and at this time it is not homesteaded. Um, the notice of violation 20180310 was mailed certified on May 30th, 2018 to the owner of record, and it was recorded in the tax collector, as recorded in the tax collector's office and to any additional responsible parties the code allows. Legal service of notice was achieved on June 14th by certified mail. In the notice of violation, the respondent was given uh, until the 30th of June to correct the violation by completing one or more of the following actions. Remove from the property all vehicles with portable signage, unlicensed vehicles, abandoned cars and boats, illegally parked or stored vehicles, tractor tires, and remove accumulation of all materials or items stored outside, including but not limited to lumber, tires, automobile parts, trash, hazardous waste, abandoned personal property, unusable or discarded household items, inoperative or discarded machinery or equipment, inoperative automobiles, appliances, solid waste, dangerous chemicals, explosives, or other hazardous substances without sufficient protections for the control of the same junk, for the control of same junk, used scrap, construction, or demolition materials, tanks, drums, glass, iron, or any other material deemed to be hazardous or unsafe. Um, this time I'd like to show you some photographs of the property. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, these photographs were taken on May 23rd, 2018. Uh, shows the location uh, of two school buses and some tractor tires. 
And as you can see, uh, there is a fence line that I'm standing behind. Uh, this is on a, a drainage basin property. I think that's uh, owned by the uh, DOT. Uh, I am currently not on the property in this photograph. Uh, here's another photograph. Again, uh, school buses uh, parked on the property and the tractor tires. Also on May 23rd, I observed this uh, fire engine on the property that did not have any license tags. Uh, I might point out that this particular um, vehicle has been removed from the property and taken out of Alachua, or the city of Newberry. It's now in the unincorporated uh, Alachua County parked uh, at a nursery. So yeah, it's not within our jurisdiction anymore. Um, Again, on May 23rd, this is the uh, wrapped buses that are essentially advertising. Uh, uh, and as you can see, the photo on the left can easily be seen from the uh, state right of way for Newberry Road. Uh, here's the advertising for Newberry Christian Community School. Again, taken on May the 23rd. Uh, there were two large uh, buses um, that have this advertising on it. In addition, on the eastern portion of the property, there was a semi-tractor trailer, a boat and boat trailer, an old, uh, what appears to be a, a abandoned vehicle, and uh, an appliance. And a, a ladder and a semi that can be seen from the state road uh, 26 or Newberry Road right of way. These were photographs that were taken on July 11th. Uh, again, the uh, bus is there, excuse me, July 10th. Uh, the bus is there, uh, again, with the uh, wrapped advertising and the boat and the semi are still there. You can see the appliance. One of the, uh, one of the buses have been removed from where it was on the front of the road and you can see the back end of it sticking out there from the semi. I returned to the site on July 11th which was I believe the deadline for compliance with the notice of violation. Uh, again the one bus still remained its front door and looks like rear engine compartment uh, were open now at this time so it would allow someone to access this vehicle. And this was on July 11th, 2018. Uh, again, looking over to the eastern portion of the property, uh, it looks like the appliance is still there. Um, the bus, you can see the rear end of the bus, that semi. Uh, it looks like the, the vehicle that was the abandoned car may have been removed. Further to the east from the right of way, you can see that the school buses have been relocated out on July 11th and are behind the bushes on the eastern side of the property. Looking at Google Earth imagery dated March 23rd, 2018, uh, you can see the placement of the uh, different vehicles. The vehicles on the western portion, or and I, I should orient you, the uh, dirt road coming in, uh, heading south on the uh, left side of the photograph, uh, is uh, southwest 186th Avenue, and the road going uh, across the top is Newberry Road. And the top of the map is north. Correct, north, north is up. And this is Google Earth imagery that was uh, posted on March 23rd, 2018, that anyone can access having a computer. Uh, the three buses uh, were school buses that are on the left-hand side. The two that are kind of angled uh, up, up uh, close to the Newberry Road right-of-way are the, school, uh, are the uh, wrapped advertised uh, buses that, uh, according to the uh, discussions I have had by phone with the respondent, they did not currently have license tags. And the uh, the fire truck is right on the eastern side of that drainage basin that's on the north uh, west corner and that has now been removed. 
Um, the semi-tractor trailer is behind the, um, the bushes there uh, on the uh, right side or east side of the photograph. Uh, there's also uh, piles of some type of debris, a, a, uh, the old vehicle and a boat that can be recognized in, in that photograph. This morning I took these photographs on August 7th. Uh, again, the one wrapped vehicle is still remaining uh, very close and viewable from State Road uh, 26 Newberry Road with the door open and back engine compartment open. And I point this out in a close up for this because I believe this constitutes a, a hazard being uh, accessible. Uh, this again from the Newberry Road right of way, you can see the semi tractor trailer, uh, the appliance, and some other uh, odds and ends material uh, behind this. I will tell you that I had requested uh, access to this property to make a proper inspection to uh, determine compliance or non-compliance and the property owner, Mr. Schrader, uh, would not allow me to access the property and, and I did not do that. So that completes the uh, photographs. Um, as a result of my inspection on August 7th, 2018, uh, we would like to recommend that you find uh, the respondents Picard and Schrader in violation uh, for uh, what I would consider three groups of violations. The first one being the chapter 14, uh, section uh, 334 with relating to hazardous lands, dangerous structures. The second being the two sections of chapter 94 uh, being abandoned vehicles and the third being the land development regulations with regard to prohibited signs. And that the respondents be given 30 days to comply uh, as set forth in the corrective action stated in the original notice of violation or a fine of $50 per day per violation. And this is three, three separate violations. Uh, the, initiated until compliance is achieved. Further, we request that the county recover the prosecution cost of $160. Based on the number of trips we have made out there and the uh, prosecution cost for notice uh, for both the hearing and notice for the uh, violation itself. I will also tell you that uh, uh, we initially did not get a uh, response back uh, from the post office uh, for receipt of the request for hearing. Uh, I did contact uh, Mr. Schrader by telephone and he advised that he was out of the country and did not see the notice, but uh, he initially re requested that, that we have a hearing so he could state his side of the story. And so, from that standpoint, uh, uh, we then sent out an amended notice by regular mail, and he did uh, receive knowledge that uh, by, by telephone that this hearing was taking place today, and as you can see, it's here. That completes staff's testimony. Would you, would you tell me again what your request is in terms of the time to remediate? 30 days from the date you signed the order. And I have one more question about the advertising part. Mm -hmm. It appears that the language uh, that would be implicated here by your testimony would be signs attached to or painted on vehicles parked and visible from the public right of way, unless it's used in the normal day-to-day -day operations of the business. Um, do, do you know if the city, and this is a commercial uh, advertisement that is on this vehicle, do you know if the city allows any kind of 
uh, advertisement on a vehicle, on a parked vehicle as described here? Uh, Your Honor, I, I believe that the, the city code would allow for uh, a vehicle that was uh, wrapped or painted in such a manner that was, uh, in other words, if they parked this school bus or this wrapped vehicle at the school and it was moving every day to transport sure. children, uh, then at the school that would be legal if the school happened to be within the city of Newbury. Right, it says, uh, and this says, it, unless it's used in the normal day-to-day -day operations is what you just described. But uh, my, my question is, is there, is there, is there, for instance, some kind of non-commercial uh, advertising that might be allowed on a permanently placed vehicle? Are you aware of anything like that? Uh, not with regard to non-commercial. Okay. Uh, All right. So, but uh, I, I will also testify that these these two vehicles haven't been moved in sure. months until one was recently my, moved. My distinction was is yeah. there, I'm, I'm trying to draw a distinction between commercial and non-commercial to make sure we don't allow some type of uh, advertising on a permanently placed vehicle, that this is an absolute prohibition that I'm looking at and there's no other provision that we're aware of in the code. That's my understanding. Okay. And is that, is that it for please? Okay. And after I hear from them, I may have some more questions, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, who wants to speak first? Come on up. Thank you, Magistrate. I'm James Schrader. I'm the principal and the founder of Newberry Christian Community School. I'm also the property owner of the land on Newberry Road with Chris Ann Picard. Her and her husband are um, chairman of the board at Newberry Christian Community School. We purchased the land as a school in the tax records under Newberry Christian Community School's name, 2013. Um, we spent about three to four hundred thousand dollars going through the process to build our school in Newberry and after um, a, about a year and a half process the special use wasn't um, granted and so at that point we bought a building in Gainesville and operate our school um, you know I've got a couple different pictures I also want to submit into evidence they're not digital um, but I can send them up to the clerk if that's okay and walk you through them um, but our neighbor is a um, old county commissioner, city of Newberry commissioner, and um, so we've had some tiffs over the last five years um, together as my neighbor. It is agricultural land. We have 10 acres. I'm going to go through step by step, but um, we use it as a football field, a practice field for our soccer team, our football team, our baseball team, and um, I have football tires that they flip out there. Um, we don't do that year round. We use it in the fall and the spring. And um, so I'll, I'll walk through those. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on how we acquired the property. We bought the property from the school to allow the cash flow to purchase the building in Gainesville. So we are holding on to that property. Um, it's 10 agricultural acres right next to 160 agricultural anchors. And we bought it from the family that owned that. And then the closest neighbor with a homestead is over 160 acres south of us off of Newberry Road. And there's no houses to our east or to our west. We are completely agriculturally surrounded. So if I can, I was going to go through. Um, he said that we were in violation of three different things. And the first was hazardous lands. I know a lot of what that was about was the tires, the tractor tires. Um, those are tractor tires from agricultural tractors that our parents donated at the school for us to flip the tires at football practice. Every fall, we would pile them at the fence line so that we could mow the property. Um, and I think that's when I got myself in a little bit of trouble was I was trying to make the property look a little better. So we were picking up the tires off the field and stacking them for the winter so they don't accumulate as much water, which they do, and then we flip them out and drain them so our boys can flip them all summer, and we mowed the entire property. Um, at this point this morning when he drove by, those tires weren't seen. They aren't visible, and I understand the mosquitoes, but I also understand um, that when we have tires to flip for football, we've drilled holes in them to try to drain them to keep down because there's no desire to have any water in those for our football players to be flipping. 
Um, so I understand the concern if there wasn't a knowledge of how the property is used. And so that was the first with the hazardous. The next thing is we have a brush pile in the back. We did have during the Hurricane Irma trees go down on our property line and on the fence lines. Um, we cut them up, got them off the fence, trying to appease the leasee next door that our tree fell on their fence line and made a pile of branches, limb debris on the back lower portion. We try to keep everything on the east side of the property. It's the lowest spot and it's also the w most wooded. Our property has one big tree in the middle and then it's wooded on both ends. Um, so with, you know, the hazardous material, I do know we had some school, um, extra school stuff that was in a shipping container that we emptied out and we made a pile of that we didn't want to store anymore. And um, Ms. Chrisanne, if she needs to, can testify. Her boys were loading up, I think, three to four different trips to the dump to make a piece on that. Um, so the hazardous grounds, I understood the mosquitoes, I understood tires and different things, but um, I'm a little bit miffed on getting a code violation for hazardous materials, but we can talk through that with different questions. The next was abandoned vehicles. As he stated, um, the fire truck under agricultural as a water truck doesn't even have to be registered, licensed, or insured, and they're in the agricultural code um, exempts from ag vehicles being considered junk. So if you go out to any agricultural property, you can tow around a fire truck full of water for water purposes. I wasn't even going to argue with them. Um, we had a friend at a nursery that made a donation and paid for it to be moved to get it off. I wanted to appease the city. I was trying. So, um, and the next, you know, I think the biggest issue were the two buses out front advertising. In his pictures, we were able to get one of the buses running. And I had a parent that worked at Caterpillar come out. He removed it to the end of the property. We hit it as far down as possible. Um, it wasn't tagged or insured, so I wasn't ready to drive it down the road to go somewhere. Um, we're working with three different scrap companies in Gainesville to scrap those buses. And that will, you know, give some money to the school, but also permanently get them off the property. But I wanted to get them off of Newberry Road because I felt that that was a major concern was the violation of the advertising on Newberry Road. Um, I also have proof of a receipt for this morning with today's date and times. Um, he was there at 9.59 a.m. It was elite towing and removed the other bus this morning and put it at the bottom of the hill. They're going to tow both buses to the scrap yard once the scrapper gives us approval. He has to come out to the property from 53rd Street in Gainesville and then they have to get a permit to drag those buses to the scrap yard. So today, and I have the pictures, both buses are not on Newberry Road advertising. They're on as far east of the property as possible behind the tree line with the intention of having them scrapped to receive some funding, but also permanently get them off of our property unless, of course, we can use them as permanent advertising. Um, up until recently, we did have them insured and licensed, and I drove them. Um, there's testimony that I can show you on videos and different things, but I drove one of those buses every day into Newberry and back. We dropped off at Publix in Jonesville back and forth. We drive our football team out there. Um, so I, I definitely understand that if we needed those removed, we got them removed. And those are off the main road. And our goal is to have them scrapped. If you would even, you know, have that as a provision, I don't mind making sure they're off the property. You're talking about which buses? The wrapped buses. The wrapped buses. The so two wrapped buses. Everything you've just said about the scrapping and removing yes, them. Yes, that was all to the, so the wrapped buses, okay. the advertising buses. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to ramble because there's okay. a lot of different things going on. I'm following you. I okay. just need clarification on that. You know, thank you, and I appreciate it. And um, can I submit this to the court, the clerk? You were, let me let me it's see it first. Bill from elite yeah, here you can you can hand okay. it to the clerk. I just wanted you to see so that we did do that, and they were not able to get the permits we'd asked and asked. And I said, "Hey guys, I've got the meeting today. Can we get them off the road?" Okay. They moved both the semi trailer and the wrapped bus as far east and into the wood line as possible to hide it. And then we have to get the proper ability to get onto Newberry Road and have them moved. And that was why, if you look on there, it was on-site movement. And he was like, you want to move them on-site? I was like, eventually, 
we need to go to the scrap yard. And he's like, I can't do that, you know. So um, the next thing is for the yellow buses, those are all licensed and insured. I have my DOT number, which is Department of Transportation. And um, so all of those buses are DOT. I got DOT numbers on them. They're licensed, they're insured. We use them for transportation of the students as well as transportation of um, anybody from agricultural. And so I know when we're transporting anybody with an active DOT number, active insurance, active license plates um, on the property, we transport our students from High Springs, Alachua, Newberry, um, and Jonesville into Gainesville with our buses. Now during the summer, we don't run bus routes. Um, so I know those buses in certain pictures you'll see, I have six buses and um, they don't all run all summer long. I think we used one or two of them this summer for after school camps, but I do have a DOT number and that's um, certified. And then I have pictures of this morning. I know um, that he went by at eight o'clock, but these were taken this morning. Um, and in the pictures, you can see elite towing A tractor trailer, the just the trailer, right? Not a, there's not a tractor there's along no with tractor. it. Tra just the, the trailer. Okay, trailer. all right. Yes, sir. And here's a better shot of where the semi trailer had been. And here's a shot of where the two buses are now. This is my property line. We got them as far over as possible. We mm -hmm. left them in a way that he can hook up to them to tow them off. And um, you know, we shut the doors back. The doors were open and. No, I, I've, I've got them. Let me, let me, while I'm on, while I'm yes, thinking sir. about this, let me go to the city. Uh, the last time you were at the uh, property was this morning. That's so what he's saying right now, you, you don't know, you, you haven't seen or not seen that. I was there at 8 o'clock and he said After that. 959. Okay. 959, yes, right. sir, was the bill. Okay. And so. You know, and that's why I brought the pictures to show the dead spots where the grass was. I understand it puts you in a hard spot because we're talking a couple of hours of making a difference. I understand. And same for him to expect him to do it before this meeting. Right. But um, the fire truck is gone. Both wrapped buses are no longer visible from Newberry Road. The semi trailer is no longer visible from Newberry Road. Our intention, as you know, if you would request, I'd be definitely willing to agree to have both of those buses scrapped and off the property and an ability that gives me time to get the um, towers to actually have permission. We want to be in compliance. I was in Cuba for the month of July and um, I know we received, I received a lot of different letters um, and I did not pick up some of them. He was wonderful and called me and was like, hey, you got a meeting coming up. And I was like, that's great to know. Um, but I was out of country um, and that's when I had phone calls into different companies to try to get some of these things rectified and taken care of. My only um, frustration that I have is with vehicles that are registered, insured, and used in a daily operation of Newberry Christian Community School. And that's the yellow buses. Um, and I just, I know we said the first was hazardous lands, which I think we took care of and acknowledged that some of those tires were for football, recreational, sports use. And we've been dumping as much to the um, county dump of any of the debris that he had talked about. Um, but the um, 
abandoned vehicles, the fire engine is gone. The boat is actually registered. It's not mine. It was a parent at the school that was evicted, parked his boat in his classic 57 Chevy. Um, he has that one actually on a car hauler, and the car hauler is registered and insured. Or registered, you don't insure a car hauler, but so it keeps his classic car up. And he has that parked now. I told him he can't have it in view, and I told him he needed to get it off of the property. But that one, both of those are tagged trailers. Um, I understood some of the things he talked about a washer and some other stuff this guy had, and he's gotten those off to the scrap yard. Um, so our goal is to be in compliance, is to clean up the property. Um, but the yellow buses, when the pictures of the yellow buses, he, um, the complaint was none of them were insured or registered. And I really didn't want them tromping on our property because we've had a lot of issues with um, certain neighbors coming on our property, tearing up our football fields. We've had ruts dug in them. We've had people spray paint on our field. Um, so we are trying to keep people off our property just because of a negativity associated with a Christian school and whatever is the past is. Um, but I told him I'll back the buses up to the retention pond and you can see valid tags so that you know I'm not blowing smoke about those two. And when he asked me about the two raft buses, I told him those were not currently licensed and insured and that I understood that that would be an issue if I was in violation. Um, we've had those for over five years and this past March was the first of an official warning of, hey, these can't be out there. And I was like, well, for five years we've had these out here. Why is it today? And he explained that he was new and we've been working together. So. I, uh, you know, have yeah, appreciated. Yeah, um, yeah, the fact that they've been there for a number of I know, there's no that's, precedent. I'm just I understand. You know that's and that's what I told him. I was like, you told me, and now we need to move right, forward. Fact, however long they've been there before is irrelevant, yep. and what the neighbor has on his property is irrelevant. Is irrelevant. Too. What so, matters right. is me. I'm here this morning. So, so it, right, it's like getting, getting a speeding ticket, so. Yeah. <laughs> I got tickets. <laughs> but um, the biggest thing was hazardous lands. I don't feel that we're in violation of that unless you're going to cite me that the tires that we use for football practices are creating a mosquito um, burden. The abandoned vehicles, as he even stated, the fire engine is gone. It's on Newberry Road down the road. We were able to get a donation out of that. We have moved other vehicles off property that did not have tags or license. I have. Um, all of the yellow school buses are tagged and licensed, DOT numbered, and moved throughout the day. I am willing to park them in a way to not agitate anyone. If that is on the low end of the property where you can't see them, if that is by the tree line, I don't mind. I understand that concern. And so that would be the next part. And then the unlawful advertising. If we are truly, as a religious organization, this isn't a commercial for profit. This is a non for profit. We are 501c3 tax exempt um, organization. If we're in violation, I, like I've said again and again, I think that was one of the big issues was the advertising on Newberry Road that kind of started this whole problem. And I understand needing to be in compliance. And I hope that we've shown by moving both of them, we want to do that and getting them off the property if required and needed. We want to. Uh, okay. So I have. Um couple of questions that I want to make sure I'm clear about. Um, the tires are used for football practice and I'm familiar with how they're used because yes, I sir. played football one time. Thank you. Um, how, I guess the football practice is in spring and the fall? Yes sir, so in the spring we do a month in April and May, between April and May, okay. and then during the summer we do conditioning and um, that's when we'll mow the property and do our football so and then all fall long until Christmas. How often are spring, uh, in spring practice, how often are you out there? All five days a week for the during four the weeks. Work, during the work week? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, summer? And then during the summer, we're three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. And, and in the fall? In the fall, we're there four days a four week days. unless there's a game day. We don't practice on Wednesdays. Okay, and then your proposal for the tires in non-football practice season would be? What I did, and I don't know if it caused trouble, I stacked them all together so I knew where they were all instead of having them all over the property. We stacked them up and to try to reduce the amount of water that was and getting into And from where them. you stacked them, where is the closest residence? 
Um, we put them um, right on the corner by the DOT land and the um, tree line of the entry into our property is where we placed them as far from anybody else's property on my property. And as how, above. how far would that be? The width of our property, a couple hundred feet. Okay. Um, you, uh, I just wanted to talk about one thing. You, you were talking about the word hazardous and um, th there's actually, when I read through this, there's two different notions okay. that apply to hazardous. Uh, one is the term hazardous land and the other is a term hazardous waste and maybe even hazardous substances. The distinction is there hazardous lands has a broad definition mm -hmm. under the code that takes into account um, a lot of a lot of uh, factors or circumstances uh, that are much broader than what we would think about as a hazardous substance. So um, I don't think we're saying that any of that may be a hazardous substance. I'm not hearing anything saying it's a hazardous substance. I'm hearing that some of this may fit the definition of a hazardous land. So that's that distinction. Yes, sir. Um, okay, I had, a, I had a note here, remove the buses, and I mean the, uh, not the school buses, the, adver the advertising bus. buses. Yes, and my question is when, and I don't know that you've specifically answered that question. You've told me what's gotta happen before that it is done. What's a fair time frame for that to happen? I mean, I'd appreciate 30 days. Um, my goal is to get them off in the next All week. Right. And now I want to talk about the school buses. Um, you say that they're that they're used to transport. Yes, sir. And uh, transport to and from your school. Yes, sir. We use them for the school. We use them for the University of Florida. We use them for an after-school program. How often are those school buses used? Every day of the week, except for on Sundays. We usually don't do anything on Sundays, but even on Saturdays, those are used. So, so then your your testimony is that these school buses are never there more than over the weekend without being moved? Uh, yes, sir, that's correct. And that's during the fall and the spring. During the summer, I will testify that they are not used as much. We usually use one or two during the summer. Your school's out during the summer? Yes, sir. And, and you don't want, you can't store them at the school itself? Or? We store some of them right now because I was trying to keep out of conflict with you guys. I have them stored at the school because we don't have teachers there in our parking lot. Um, but like I said, once we fill up our parking lots during the days and we have transport, um, I drive, I live in Jonesville, so I just drive out to the property, get in the bus and drive them in from a new So, I, okay, so I'm trying, I've got to tie this back to the language of the code. Um, we've got three articles in 94. Well, let me back up. I don't know that the school buses I guess I want to hear back from the city on this, but I'm not really seeing and hearing that the school buses may implicate the um, dangerous building and hazardous land. So, and I'm, and if they have been removed from visibility of the public right of way, then I think the advertising might be out of it. But then I focus on there's three provisions in chapter 94. Uh, one is stopping 94 Article 4, 94-94, I'm sorry. Unlawful to park or leave standing or permit another to do so for the purpose of displaying advertising or for the purpose of storage or as junkage or dead storage for more than 24 hours. Uh, and then we have 94-122, uh, no person shall abandon any vehicle within the city and no person shall leave any vehicle for such time and circumstances as to cause such vehicle reasonably to appear to have been abandoned. I don't think that, based on your description of the use of the school buses, I don't think that is implicated during the school year. During the summer, I guess the question is, does that vehicle reasonably appear to have been abandoned? And, now, and uh, then, and then, ninety-four dash one twenty-four wrecked or non-operating vehicles on private property. I think as long as as those are are um, operating vehicles, I'm not sure that is implicated. So, 
I've got to go back to 122. And just to tell you, we do go out on the property and start the buses, because if I don't start and at least move them on the property, the brakes will either get, you know, a little rusted from sitting or the batteries will die. And to be honest with you, that's what happened to the two wrapped buses. And that's why we struggled to get those moving was I only got one of those two going. But with the operations of the yellow buses being DOT inspected and certified, they have to be in a shape that is up to the state standards. So they have to be moved on a decently regular basis, even during the summer, even if they don't leave the property. Okay. And uh, I, I think I've heard you testify that your use of the property is uh, for obviously storage of some things and for your your sports. practices, sports practices. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, you may not know this question. You may not know the answer to the question. You may it is you had mentioned that the property is agriculturally zoned. Um, or do y'all have do y'all have y'all filed anything with the property appraiser as it being ag use? Or so we, it, uh, or, or y'all have your tax exemption otherwise? We don't have a tax exemption through the ag because we were using it for a football field. Mm -hmm. um, they we were trying to get it exempt through that as a sports field. Um, so we you know the Picards, which I'm part of the property with them, have pine tree farms all throughout Newberry. In Alachua County, mm -hmm. and so Marty was like, "Hey, we need to pi plant pine trees to get the ag exemption," and I was like, "But we need a football field <laughs> and a baseball field." And do do so, y'all have any? Do y'all have any kind of exemption of it being a school? School owned? Uh, no, because once the school sold it to us, we okay. couldn't do okay. that way. I got it. Okay. Anything else? Just that, you know, our goal is to be in compliance. If you tell us what to do with the raft buses, if, like I said, that was, I think, the biggest issue, um, I am 100%, you know, I hope we showed that getting them off the road was the biggest thing today and then getting them off the property if that's an issue with the city. Okay. And then to be able to run our business or nonprofit um, mm -hmm. with the vehicles is all okay. we ask. Rebuttal from the city. Mr. Chair, I, I might advise that uh, Mr. Schrader was totally courteous throughout our discussions, our three or four phone conversations, and, and uh, uh, certainly he had his concerns. Um, one of the things that I, I uh, didn't, well, I was remiss in doing, I, I didn't uh, submit a written copy of the uh, photographs that we, I've shown, and I'd like to do that. Yeah, fine. The clerk will make that a part of the record. And in our discussions, uh, I found out that uh, Mr. Schrader was in Cuba the same time I was. <laughs> so right. uh, we, we uh, talked about the, the, the vehicles and uh, why, why it was important that I got on the premises to make a determination whether they're licensed and operable or not. And he declined to allow me to do a, an on-site inspection. What I would like to request as part of the um, uh, confirmation of compliance that uh, he agreed to meet with me on site so I can do uh, a proper inspection to determine if there are any uh, still existing uh, violations that aren't corrected within that 30-day period. Mm -hmm. um, the concern we have about the school buses that are the yellow non-wrapped school buses uh, is relating to section 94-94. This particular property does not have any development plan or site plan approval as a parking lot or as a school, and therefore we have school buses parking on vacant property. Uh, the, the property currently, although it's fenced along Newberry Road, there is an access point that is not gated uh, that, that maybe should be, uh, and I think the city would be happy to sit down and, and discuss with uh, uh, Mr. Schrader and Ms. Picard as, as to what we think would be required for him to park those school buses there and become in compliance with 94-94. But currently, he is using them for storage and there's no site plan approval or development plan approval for that activity. Uh, so the, uh, we, th we think it, uh, it's, it sounds like he's made a lot of progress even since I was there at eight o'clock this morning. And, and uh, my only two questions would be, 
would he be willing to allow an on-site inspection with him in attendance? And could he get this accomplished within 30 days? Let me ask you about, you, you show me some pictures from March, then you showed me some pictures from uh, June, I think, and, and then July, or maybe Ju March, then July, then, then today. And then August. Yeah. Um, what, what has been your observation of the movement of the school buses <laughs> during that period of time? Uh, it, it, the, he's, he's testified that they use them daily during the, uh, during the school year. Is that your observation? Well, in, in, in March, they were out to the uh, west side of the property, and we could see them, and they would move from time to time. Uh, in July, uh, we first saw them that they had been moved behind the bushes and were staying there for a while. Uh, I can't see them at this point because I don't have access to the property and the bushes filled out. Okay. So again, I think my concern is um, it's 94-122 uh, and 94-10 and for the purpose of storage uh, or as junkage or dead storage for more than 24 hours. Which is um, a subsection under 94-94. Right, yes. Um, so those are the two concerns that I have in terms of just looking at, hearing the testimony and looking at the, at the code. But I, I hear you saying that um, you would like the opportunity from the city standpoint to work with him to see if that, what, what his intended use of the property as it relates to the school buses are to be made legal in some fashion. That's correct. Okay, I'm not seeing anything presented today uh, regarding what you indicated as far as um, uh, a proper site uh, plan or site uh, approval uh, as a prop as an allowed use you're, you're not asking him to be cited because he's, he's uh, doesn't have an allowed use for this that's, that's, that's kind of works into it but I hear you saying that okay and uh, the only other thing I have a question about I think I've got my mind around all this is the um, tires do you have thoughts about the tires if there was a way to store these that would, would not be um, hazardous where they, they would not collect water and they would not be viewed from outside, if, if, if he could uh, come up with a way to do that, I, I would be amenable to that if they were out of sight and, and not a hazard. Right. Um, and be glad to I'm be ask you the same. What, what's your thoughts about the proximity of, the, of, of where these tires are stored now to, to a residential property? to a, a nearest residence. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, I'm not sure where the tires are today. All right. Uh, and, and Your Honor, I believe there was a, a second individual that was going to testify too, so I just mm -hmm. wanted to. All right. Okay. All right, well, let's, um, let's move to that then. Any other testimony? I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, come up so we can get you on the record. I just wanted to mention that the semi-tractor trailer, the boat, the car, we had a family within our school family that was evicted from their home and had nowhere to put their, thank you, <laughs> and had nowhere to put their belongings. Um, that was never intended to be a permanent part of the property. It was just um, taking care of our own. And they have since, um, found accommodations. They're no longer living with one of our other families, and they're working towards getting all their belongings um, moved off. Can you speak to the time frame for that? I cannot. I have, I have not spoken directly to them. I right. take their kid home from school during the school year. But. Okay. All right, anything else? No, that was basically it. Okay. ask for clarification so sure. that we don't get into a spot um, with the semi trailer on the property I haven't moved as far to the east you cannot see it from Newberry Road you cannot see it from the top of the ridge it is on the property is that going to need to be removed which I will if I need to to be in compliance or is that allowed to stay where it is if it's not going to be seen from the road or from adjacent properties? Um, I'm working my thought process. I got you. I don't want to that. muddle it. I just wanted to make sure yes, so I, that, you know, if I bring out a tow company that 
that's on the list. Of, I've got to address. Yes, I, okay. I'm going to address that before I, I finish up today. Hope I did not muddle. I just wanted okay. to make sure when we were talking about him coming out, I don't want him to be like James. This is hidden in the woods. I didn't see it until I walked on the property. I'm like, okay, what are we going to do now? All right. So I have a question to ask you. Yes, sir. Um, and I'll preface this to say that the code enforcement officer, um, even without your consent is allowed on the property uh, can yeah uh, might i, mean, I know if, that if you're if you refuse he may have he may have to go get a warrant or something like that so my question is you, you've heard his request y'all seem to be working good on this are you willing to allow him access to the property as long as, as he's with of me this? of course okay and that's suitable okay all right um so in, in terms of in terms of what I'm seeing, the kind of more thorny issues here are the tires, um, the school buses, and you're asking you're asking for some relief on the semi trailer. Everything else seems to be kind of taken care of. Is that where I'm hearing that? Especially if you can get access and see. Your Honor, uh, one question comes to mind: What's in the semi tractor trailer? Yeah. Well. I have no idea. It's got two locks on it, and it um, was moved today. The air brakes worked on it, and um, he's got two paddle locks. The ladder was laid against it so he could get into it. I think it's probably his entire house. Okay, I'm gonna break this in. down. I'm gonna break this down into two categories, um, and I, I'm going to, I think, based on what I've heard, find that there are violations with the tires with the advertising buses, with the school bus, uh, buses, and with the semi-trailer. Uh, I am going to, uh, the first category of those items is going to be the advertising buses and the semi-trailer. And I think I'm going to, um, I am going to uh, give 30 days for those items to be taken care of. And that 30 days will begin when I sign the order, which will be a few days from now. So you're going to get some leeway there. Uh, I'm going to, based on the comments of the city code enforcement officer, I'm going to delay any, uh, other than finding a violation, I'm going to delay any further order uh, regarding the tires and the two school buses to allow the uh, owner's time to work with the code enforcement and other appropriate officials of the city uh, to try to find a way to make those legal. Uh, that will stay open for a possible, uh, the code enforcement officer can decide to bring that back uh, if, that, if that effort you know, fails or, or needs, some, needs to bring it back for further consideration from the magistrate's level. I'm going to, in, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna address access in my order because I don't know that I have really uh, authority on that, uh, but um, verbally will, will state that I understand that the parties are going to work together uh, with access to be able to, for the city to be able to see what's going on with the property. Um, James Schrader is willing to allow the inspection as long as he's willing to, you know, get with me to come out. And I agree with that. Okay. Um, I'm going to order the $160 of enforcement cost uh, to be imposed in, in my order. Um, I'm not going to impose any further fine at this time. I am going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to set a fine of, um, I think what was asked for was $50 a day per violation of these three sections. So that would be 150, I'm, I'm going to make that be $100 a day after and that won't start until after the 30 days has run. Okay. Anything that, any details that I may have left out from either side? 
Your Honor, just for clarification so we can get the order drafted correctly, could you state the sections of the code that you're finding action on now for clarification? And that, yeah, this will be for the purpose of the of the initial round of drafting. I'll touch up the orders before I finalize them. Um, hang on. Uh, did I leave out? Did I address the um, abandoned car, or are they gone? Is that gone? The. Uh car was not abandoned that's a um, classic 57 Chevy is it on still trailer. on the property still on the property it's um, yeah. right next to um, my car hauler I have a blue trailer and an enclosed trailer that I are think, all registered I think it has to go in the same category as the advertising buses in the semi trailer okay um, what about the boat the registered boat yeah it's got a it's uh, it'll fall into that same 30 plus day category okay um, right. he did not mention any of the low foot and a half tall double axle car haulers blue trailers or a white enclosed trailer yeah, and i've not seen i've not seen any evidence as it relates to that i just want to make sure I, i'm trying to be 100 percent above reproach i personally <laughs> right. own those i live in tioga and i park them in my driveway but i also park them out there and i didn't know if that was going to be a violation with registered I, i'm going to defer uh, because uh, I think that falls into the category of access to the property and that's why we don't know about them today and I don't really have anything to go by today so I'm going to defer uh, consideration of that till um, the access has been granted and, and he's able to go out there and look at it and then I will leave it to the parties to try to work that out and if not I'll guess I'll consider that at a future time so <laughs> all right so I'm thinking that the the tires Will fall under the category of um, chapter 14 section 14 dash well the, the the appropriate provisions of chapter 14 which there may be some definitional provisions and then some violation provisions there that have to be so it's under so that the the tires under chapter 14 um, all of the vehicles I'm going to um, find violation as appropriate, and we have to look at each one of them under 9494, 94122, and 94124. Hang on. Do we know what the definition of vehicle is? What did the definition of vehicle include the semi trailer? Okay, then I'm going to I'm going to say that the advertising buses and the semi trailer. Uh, and the um, advertising buses in the semi trailer all uh, violate all three 94, 94, 94, 122, and 94, 124. And say that the other, the remaining vehicles um, violate 94, 94, and 94, 122. And when I, when I go to finalize the order, I may, that may, that may, vary a little bit but that's how I want the order drafted up in the beginning and I'm not going to find any violation under the sign ordinance there's a lot of federal case litigation going on under sign ordinances and I, if, I don't think I need to implicate that to get what we want accomplished and I don't want to cause a problem 30 days to remedy from the signing my order, $160 uh, cost in, in position, and uh, $100 per day uh, after the 30 days runs. Your Honor, one, one question on the sign. Um, mm -hmm. At this point in time, uh, 
the respondent has provided evidence that he's removed both of those buses. Um, so uh, the other option you would have is to find him in compliance. Uh, if, if you so sure accept that. right, and I and I we let's make a note to put that in there that he is in compliance with uh, the sign part of it because he's moved it from visibility, and the city's okay with his word that he that he did move it this morning, right? Okay, okay, very good. All right. Anything else? Thank you. Okay. Ended. Thank you for coming. Okay, Madam Clerk, we call the next case. Case number CE 2018-005, violation number 2018-02006, City of Newberry, Florida versus Bevel Jr. and Bevel. Okay, do we have anybody present for this case? Okay. Uh, and either one of you or both of you, if you intend to speak and testify, I need you to stand and raise your right hand to be sworn in by the clerk. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in these cases today will be the truth and the whole truth? All right, and if y'all could, before we go, move to the city, if you could give me your names for the record. Uh, my name is uh, John Bell Jr. Okay. Okay, and are y'all the owners of the property? Yes. Okay, very good. All right. Again, Mr. Chair, my name okay, is... Y'all can have a seat for just a minute, and you'll have a chance here in a minute. Again, Mr. Chair, my name is... Um, excuse me. Your Honor, my name is Rick Wolf, uh, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of Newberry. I have been sworn and my credentials are on file. This is case CE 2018-05 and the respondents are Bevel Jr. and Bevel. And the photographs that I'm about to present in evidence accurately represent the violation as seen and were taken on the dates as indicated on each photograph. On the 13th of February 2018, the City of Newberry Code Enforcement Office received a complaint about overgrown vacant lot with excessive growth of vegetation creating a local, uh, a hazard located at Northeast, uh, excuse me, Northwest 2nd Avenue and Northwest 252nd Street on tax parcel 02114-011-000. The property was inspected by me on the 13th of February and also on July 11th and also on this morning, August 7th, 2018. And it was found to be within the incorporated city limits of the city of Newberry and in violation of the city code of ordinances. Chapter 14, article six, section 14, uh, 331 through 341, uh, entitled dangerous buildings and hazardous lands, section specifically 14334, creating, keeping, maintaining, or allowing the existence of dangerous or hazardous lands unlawful. It shall be unlawful for any owner of real property within the city to create, keep, maintain, or allow the existence of any dangerous building or hazardous land as defined in the article uh, or on such real property. And within that section, the definition of uh, uh, Excessive growth, excessive growth of vegetation as defined as vegetation over 12 inches high that is or may reasonably become infested by pest or create a fire hazard or safety hazard. Uh, in the uh, complaint that I received, the complaint, it was complaining about vermin, snakes, and, and, and uh, uh, mammals coming across the road and, and observed on the property. Uh, the property is zoned residential, single family, RSF, and is approximately 0.47 acres in size. Uh, the property is vacant and is not homesteaded at this time. The notice of violation number 2018-02-006 was mailed certified mail to the owner of record as recorded in the tax collector's office and to any other additional responsible parties as the uh, code allows. 
legal service of the notice of violation was achieved on February 17, 2018 by certified mail. In that notice of violation, the response were given until March 20 uh, to correct the violation by completing one or more of the following actions. To clean up and remove excessive vegetation from the property over 12 inches high and to retain shrubs, trees, and bushes utilized as natural landscaping. I'd like to at this time show you some photographs of the property. Uh, this was the property as of February 13th, 2018. Uh, as you can see uh, on Northwest 2nd Avenue, uh, east of Northwest 252nd Street. As you can see, it was heavily uh, vegetated and hadn't been cleaned or cleared for, for quite a while. And that's on February 13th. On July 11th, uh, it is um, during the growing season, so to speak, uh, you can see it is densely uh, overgrown with uh, annual weed growth and vegetation and vines. Uh, Before you move off of that picture is the house that I see in the corner there. Is that, that's another That's a se separate property to the east. So, so I would, so the, you, you're probably- The property line starts where the vegetation begins there. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, again, two more photographs, one looking northeast and one looking northwest uh, of the property and the city has mowed the right-of-way on, on both corners of the property but uh, again at the property line uh, it's extensive growth this picture was taken this these photographs were taken this morning on august 7th at 8 15 and again the annual weed growth and, and vines have just overtaken the property okay Two more shots of that uh, from this morning. And your honor, um, in the notice of violation, the respondents have been given until March 20th to correct the violation. I have been in contact with Mr. Bevel uh, on, uh, I believe, at least two occasions by phone. Uh, he has had some health issues and uh, has been unable to uh, get down here at this time. They live in Jacksonville. And uh, so um, it was at a point now where we did uh, send uh, a notice of hearing. That notice of hearing was sent out and uh, we also sent a, uh, an amended notice of hearing because we neglected to correct the day. The date was correct, August 7th, but it was, uh, so then we sent out a second amended notice of hearing uh, advising that it was Tuesday instead of Wednesday, and they are here today. Uh, we recommend that uh, you find the respondents in violation uh, for Chapter 14, uh, Dangerous Buildings and Hazardous Lands for the uh, purpose of uh, the uh, overgrowth. Uh, it, uh, it shall be unlawful for the real property owner within the city to create, keep, maintain, or allow ex existence of dangerous buildings or hazardous lands as defined in the article on such real property that they be given 30 days to comply as to set forth in the corrective action and that uh, a fine of $50 per day until compliance is achieved, if not achieved within the 30 days from the signing of the order. Uh, further that the county recover the cost of the prosecution for $120. That concludes staff's comments. Be happy to answer any questions. Uh, I have I may have another question, but I'll come back to you with that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Miss Bevel. And Miss Bevel, before you start, can I um, confirm that we have your correct address? Yes. And that's 10959 Lydia Estates Drive East, Jacksonville, Florida? Yes. Okay. All right. And you've heard the, um, you've heard the, the testimony and you saw the photographs. Um, do you, do you agree with the characterization that it's overgrown? All I can say is that um, ever since 
he had two rep knee replacements. One went bad. The, then he had waited two years to replace. Then they had to replace it with another one. So now he have a permanent knee replacement. And in the meantime, they pinched his nerves so he had permanent left foot drop. I have documentation. Do you want to read I'm, it? I'm, I'm okay. I, 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 okay, uh, it's, it's permanent. I believe the testimony, so okay. yes. Okay. Um, and we, well, not this time, but the time before that, we got with the city and we asked them, could they recommend someone who would cut the property for us? Okay, what they did is all those weeds, they went round a tree, charged us $300 and did not cut the other part. So I, we're in a predicament because it seemed like every time we try to get somebody to, to cut the property, they take the money, but they don't do the work. Mm -hmm. So I, what I want to ask you, because the city had cut that property when we first got it, and I was just wondering if I could get the city to cut that for me and we can pay, if it's, you know, we're hoping it's not too expensive or you don't do that. Uh, we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I, it, it seems obvious to me that, um, um, I mean, I'm, I, I, I haven't had a knee replacement, but I wouldn't start trying to do that on my own. I would have to hire somebody to do it. Yes. Yeah. So, um, okay. Anything else? No, that's okay. Sure. Sure. But he, yeah, they, they, they used two houses as yes, there's two houses only. Yes. Right. So we had the houses tore down, but the city tore them down. And uh, the, the fire chief said that they were going to use the property as training to go in there and clean it up. And then every time it grows, they're going to use no, it they for training. So yeah. that's what he told us not to worry about. Yeah, my experience with the fire department is they're usually interested in the structure, not the, not the, the vacant land, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure about Newberry. So, um, okay. Well, based on the um, based on the testimony, I'm, uh, let me let me go to the first part, which is the violation part, and then we'll move to what what might happen with the property. Um, I'm going to find that there is uh, that, that the photographs and the testimony indicate that there is a violation of overgrowth on the property. And that is set forth in the um, in the statute uh, uh, the statutes contained in Chapter 14 uh, of the of the city's code. I'm going to uh, follow the recommendation or uh, of the code enforcement officer as to cost of $120 to be imposed in the order. Uh, I'm going to allow, uh, as I did before in the prior case, 30 days from the time I signed the order uh, to have this remedied. And now I want to ask a question of the code enforcement officer. You did not mention uh, any request for a recommendation to the city commission to initiate cleanup of the property. Do you have any comment on that? Your Honor, uh, we did not because at, at this point in time, I don't think uh, uh, this necessitates that as long as we have an owner that we are dealing with. In the previous case, uh, last hearing, we did not, we, both of the owners were deceased and we had no, no other alternative. Right. Uh, at this point, uh, I will advise you that the, the city currently does not have a land clearing or uh, mowing contractor uh, on record. Uh, I will be happy to try to uh, find a few uh, that uh, we don't suggest any individual, but right. perhaps could help the bevels. Um, but uh, we currently don't do that work. Um, the fire chief uh, currently, I don't think, is doing any uh, control like this for vacant property. Right. We, we wouldn't be interested in doing this. Uh, so. 
Uh, we would mow the right of way, but it's up to the property owner of record to maintain their property. And mowing around the trees is essentially what's what's needed. The trees right. should remain. That there are beautiful trees on this property. Right. Uh, just the uh, annual weed growth and the uh, the, the uh, ground vegetation that needs to, and vines that need to be removed. All right. Okay. So. Um, so, I, so I'm gonna order as I've said, and during the 30 days uh, that you, you in and out, it'll be a, a more than 30 days by the time I sign the order and it gets mailed out to you. Um, you, you will need to attempt to um, uh, contact a some contractor, to, uh, some mowing contractor, to come out and clean the property. Um, you, you can coordinate. I'm not gonna put this in my order, but you've heard the uh, city say that they will assist you to help you find somebody that will do that. Um, the city's not in a position to negotiate with the contractor for you. Yeah. And, and so, and, and I guess I'm not gonna put this in my order either, but um, don't pay the contractor until they finish the job. Uh, so. We have set up a date right. for me to come here. Right. And he sent his men a day or two before we were supposed to come. I mean, right. I, and I, you know, I had it, what happened was, um, since he had cut it, I had to, uh, something came up and I came a week after I had sent him his check. But from now on, if he can't come when we uh, uh, schedule it, then he don't get any money. Right. So, so that's, that's what I'm going to order in this case. And then let me just say that um, uh, if, if this goes on, the city does have uh, uh, the, the code enforcement officer has the right to come back to me and ask for a recommendation to have the city contract to clean it up. Um, that's pro you're you're probably going to get the job done much cheaper if you do get it done yourself than if the city goes and finds somebody to do it. Okay, so, thank you. Uh, so I would uh, so I would encourage you within the within the 30 days to uh, actively pursue getting getting some work done there. So. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. And Your Honor, just just for the record, we yes. did uh, provide a hard copy to the clerk for uh, case number 005. Right. Okay. So, and that'll be admitted as evidence in the case of the photographs. Okay, Madam Clerk, if you would uh, move to the next case. Case number CE 2018-006, violation number 2018-02027. City of Newberry, Florida versus Hazel Wallace Air. Is there anybody here uh, on behalf of the respondent in case number 2018-006? Seeing none, Mr. Code Enforcement Officer, you may proceed. Mr. Chair, again, I'm Rick Wolf, City of Co uh, Newberry Code Enforcement Officer, and I have been sworn and my uh, credentials are on file with the clerk. This is case number CE 2018-006. The respondents are Hazel Wallace Ayers, and the photographs that I'm uh, presenting into evidence will accurately represent the violation as seen and were taken by me on the dates indicated on the photograph. Uh, I will also say that uh, it's our understanding that Hazel Wallace Ayers is deceased. Hazel Wallace is deceased. Uh, excuse me. Um, right. Yeah. And I think they've shifted it over to being what, her in the heir's name. Yes. Um, on the 27th of February 2018, while on patrol, uh, I observed an overgrown lot with excessive growth of vegetation and an abandoned, dilapidated mobile home that was creating a hazard located at 710 Northwest 254th Street on tax parcel 02329-000. The property was inspected by myself on the 27th day of February, on July, uh, July 11th, 2018, and on August 7th, 2018, and was found to be within the incorporated area of the City of Newberry and in violation of the City of Newberry Code of Ordinances. Chapter 14, Article 6, Section 14, 331 through 341, and specifically Section 14, 334, creating, keeping, and maintaining or allowing the existence of dangerous buildings or hazardous lands unlawful. 
It shall be unlawful for any owner of real property within the city to create, keep, maintain, or allow the existence of any dangerous building or hazardous land as defined in this article or in such, on such real property. The mobile home on this property is damaged, dilapidated, and or structurally unsafe to the extent that it is dangerous to life, safety, and the uh, general welfare of the occupants or the people within the city. The structure appears to be vacant and abandoned and untended or unkept to the extent that it poses a health or safety hazard and the mobile home is uh, left unsecure at this time. Your Honor, the property is zoned residential single family mobile home, uh, which is known as RSF MH2, and it's approximately 0.25 acres in size. The property is currently not homesteaded. Uh, at this time, I'd like to show you the photographs. This was the initial photographs uh, after observing the property. Uh, the building official and myself placarded the property uh, as, as condemned. Uh, that it was uh, unlivable at this time. The stairway was, uh, uh, ramp was falling down. There was broken windows open. There was fixtures outside. And uh, it was in a very dilapidated condition. Uh, here's a couple more photographs uh, from the 27th of February. Uh, as you can see that one window was broken, um, a toilet outside, and, and the ramp was in poor condition. Is the back side of the trailer where some of the siding was gone. After several attempts to uh, contact the uh, respondent, uh, we did find that there was a, uh, a family member uh, that was living in Tampa and determined that uh, Hazel Wallace heirs uh, Hazel Wallace was deceased. A gentleman by the name of Frank Jones uh, contact, we contacted and apparently he was, um, uh, Ms. Wallace was the guardian for Mr. Jones. And Mr. Jones has advised that this property, uh, that there is paperwork that this property is um, to be given to him, but there has never been a probate filed as of this time. Uh, so we were un uh, unable to uh, get delivery of service on our notice of violation, and therefore we uh, posted the property uh, on July 11th and uh, posted it with uh, both the notice of violation and, and uh, later the notice of violation request for hearing. Uh, the property was also posted not only on the property, but at, at City Hall in accordance with the statutes. And yeah, here's I'm, a photograph of the... I'm, I'm, I see your affidavit of posting, and that's sufficient for me. And, and that is in, in the documents. Uh, additional photographs were taken on August 7th. Uh, we had a, a, a bad storm back in March, and several trees uh, fell down on the property over top of the mobile home. And again, this has been vacant since I first observed it in February. Uh, uh, here's a photograph taken today where you can see the, the fine growth and vegetation, uh, considerable, the ramp broken down, uh, and it, the property's just totally overgrown. Uh, I was visited by Mr. Jones uh, last Wednesday, who was here from Tampa and uh, advised that uh, at this time he did not have the wherewithal to start any corrective action on the property. Uh, we advised him that the hearing was today. Um, initially there was some confusion when we sent out the original uh, notices of violation uh, uh, request for hearing. Uh, it said Wednesday, August 7th. Uh, we originally tried to schedule it for the 8th and there was a conflict because this room was being used for a budget presentation. We bumped it back to the 7th, but when we sent out the notice of hearing, we corrected the date, but not the, the day. And we did correct that and, and mailed that out. So that, that's the current condition as it, as it now stands. The notice of violation 2018 02027 
was mailed certified mail and as I mentioned did come back unclaimed. So we uh, complied with the service requirements by posting. In the notice of violation, the respondents were given to July 31st to correct the violation by completing one or more of the following actions, and that action was the dangerous building shall be uh, made safe by repair or restoration or be demolished and removed. As a result of my inspection today, uh, August 7th, uh, staff recommends that you find the respondent, Hazel Wallace Ayers, in violation of Chapter 14, Article 6, Section 14334. Uh, uh, with regard to hazardous lands, dangerous structures, and that they be given 30 days to comply as set forth in the corrective action stated in the original notice of violation or a fine of $50 per day until compliance is achieved. Further, that the county require prosecution cost of $120. That concludes staff's testimony. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and I'm going to provide a, a hard copy of, of the photograph shown to the clerk for the record. Did you say one hundred and twenty dollars? Yes, yes, okay. sir. Then I would ask the clerk to admit the uh, photographs to record as well as the uh, the packet, especially the affidavit of um, posting. And let me make sure I'm understanding. You've asked for a finding regarding the hazardous lands or dangerous building and hazardous lands, are you asking for just the dangerous building or both? The, the vegetation as well as the... Uh, okay. So you're asking the, the for a finding that this is a dangerous building and also that these are hazardous lands. That's correct. Okay. Okay, so uh, I, will, uh, I will... Let me ask you one more question. Did, when Mr. Um, Jones was in town, did you verify that we have the right address for him? Yes, we did. Okay. And uh, we, we sent him, uh, we posted the property again with the notice of hearing, but we also sent him a, what we call a courtesy copy because he's claiming to be uh, a rightful heir. Okay. Um, and this Tampa address is his address, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. I will, I will find that, um, that we have sufficient evidence to show that there exists on this property a dangerous building and hazardous land. Uh, we'll give 30 days uh, to bring this property into compliance. Um, thereafter, there will be imposed a $50 a day fine and also be imposed $120 in cost. Anything else we need on that? And if Mr. Jones happens to show up tomorrow for the hearing, y'all will please let me know. <laughs> okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, let's move to the next case. Case number CE 2018 007. Violation number 2018-04005, City of Newberry, Florida versus Baisley and Smith and Smith and Smith. Okay, are there any persons present on behalf of the respondents Baisley and the three, three Smiths? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Code Enforcement Officer, you may proceed. Mr. Chairman, Rick Wolf again with the City of Newberry Code Enforcement Office, and I have been sworn and my credentials are on file. This is CEB case CE 2018-007, and the respondents are Baisley, Smith, Smith, and Smith. The photographs that I, I have taken are uh, presenting into evidence or accurately represent the violating, uh, violations I've seen and were uh, taken by me on the dates indicated on each photograph. Uh, the Fourth day of August, excuse me, fourth day of April 2018, uh, the city code enforcement officer, while on patrol, observed an overgrown vacant lot with a, a excessive vegetation uh, creating a hazard at 25324 Northwest Fifth Avenue on tax parcel 02347 000 000. 
The property was inspected by me on the fourth day of April, 2018, and on the uh, July 11th, 2018, and on August 7th, 2018, and was found to be within the incorporated city limits of the city of Newberry and in violation of city of Newberry code of ordinances. Chapter 14, article six, section 14, 331 through 341, and specifically has this lands, uh, section 14, 334, uh, for keeping, maintaining, or allowing the existence of dangerous or hazardous lands unlawful. It shall be unlawful for any owner of real property within the city to create, keep, maintain, or allow the existence of any dangerous building or hazardous land as defined in the article in or, or uh, on such real property. And Your Honor, this is again for excessive growth of vegetation as defined as vegetation over 12 inches high that is or may reasonably uh, cause infestation by pest or created fire or safety hazard. The property in question is zoned residential single family mobile home, RSF MH2, and is approximately 0.24 acres in size. The property is vacant and not homesteaded at this time. The notice of violation 2018 was mailed out certified mail to the owner of record as recorded in the tax collector's office and to any other additional responsible parties as the code allows. Legal service of the notice of violation was achieved April 13th, 2018 by certified mail, and it was signed by Mr. Fletcher Blaisley, ba Baisley, excuse me. And at this time, I'd like to show some photographs of the property. Is Mr., is, is that the Baisley, have we checked to see if that's correct, Baisley, um, that's in a deed record, or do we know? Uh, I believe we have, Your Honor, it, uh, I, I, he is, Part of the Baisley, Smith, Smith, and Smith. And uh, I'll further explain in, in just a second. Okay, I'd like to show some photographs at this time. This was when I first uh, observed the property on January 24th, 2018. As you can see, the property to the east, to the right of the picture, ha has a house on it, and this property was uh, overgrown to the west. This is a photograph taken on July 11th, again showing the house to the east and the overgrown property to the west. Uh, this is along the dirt road, which we uh, uh, have defined as Northwest Fifth Avenue. And if these uh, photos look somewhat familiar, this was uh, the property directly east to the Lundy and Murray case that we had uh, last hearing. And to be more specific, uh, is a closer view. The property, the three lots to the west was the Lundy Murray property. Uh, the two lots that are shown in the uh, blue uh, trapezoid, uh, is the property that we're now talking about. This is a photograph taken today. Again, uh, no action has been taken. Uh, the overgrowth continues. Uh, and then there's a looking westward down Fifth Avenue. Uh, again, no, no corrective action being taken. Your Honor, in the notice of violation, the respondent was given until the 9th of May to correct the violation by completing one or more of the following actions. And essentially it was to clean up and remove excessive vegetation from property over 12 inches high and retain shrubs, trees, and bushes utilized as natural landscaping. As a result of my inspection on uh, the seventh day of August, 2018, uh, we recommend that you find the respondents in violation of, of this section. Um, I did receive a couple of phone calls uh, and was contacted by a gentleman by the name of Harold Warmack. Mr. Warmack is the nephew of Fletcher Baisley and I believe the cousins of the Smiths. And he advised me that Mr. Baisley is elderly and is suffering some uh, 
dementia issues and that he is starting to handle his affairs and that the Smiths are residing in Baltimore and he has forwarded uh, the information that was received by Mr. Baisley who signed for this uh, to them. Uh, I received a call and I, I've talked to Mr. Warmack two or three times that he was going to come and look at the property and see what can be done. I received a call from Mr. Uh, Warmack this morning that he was meeting to hire a contractor to commence work on, on cleaning up this property uh, and he anticipates that this would be done within the next 30 days. But we would recommend that you find the respondent guilty and in violation of section 14334 and that they be given 30 days uh, to comply as set forth in the original notice of violation or a fine of $50 per day until compliance is achieved and further that the county recover the cost of prosecution of $120. And I am at this time providing to the clerk for inclusion in the record the photographs of this property. I note on your notice of code violation dated April 5th that you noted that a copy, you sent a copy to Harold Wormack at a P.O. Box 1193 in Wildwood. It, it, did you get, I'm, I'm comparing that to an address that is, that is in a quit claim deed that was recorded in the public records and it's different. So did Mr. Warback tell you that was his address or? It's his address. Yes. It's Mr. Warmack's address? Yes. Okay. Right. The, the address for uh, Mr. Baisley was the P.O. Box. 1193. So you say that's Mr. Baisley's P.O. Box or Mr. Warmack's P.O. Box? Uh, Mr. Baisley. Mr. Baisley. Okay. Because I have a, street, a county road address in this quit claim deed. which is our, our tax record address is what? The uh, tax record address is the PO box 1193. It's on page 7-10. Okay. All right, um, and, and as I mentioned, Mr. Uh, Warmack described Mr. Baisley as he'll sign for things, but he doesn't understand them at this point, and, and that uh, he's taking over handling his affairs. He's, I believe, a nephew. All right, so before I, um, before I leave today, I want to provide the clerk with a copy of this quit claim deed that has, a, has another address on it, and I want us to, um, I want us to send uh, the final order on this to both addresses. Um, because I'm thinking that other street address may be Mr. Warmack's street address and might be, it, just make sure we send the most notice that we can. So I'm going to make a finding in this case based on the evidence presented in the photographs um, that this property is in violation uh, of the code provision that speaks to hazardous lands. Uh, I'm going to give um, 30 days from the date of the order to bring this into compliance. Uh, thereafter, there will be a $50 a day fine imposed and uh, the order will include $120 in cost. Anything further on this case? Uh, that concludes our testimony on this case. Okay. Any further items for this agenda? Your Honor, just as a, a follow-up to last hearing, uh, we have some good news. Uh, the Howard and Williams case came into compliance and the driveway was removed. Uh, and that case is closed. The property of Lundy and Murray uh, was sold at auction through the county, county tax collector's office today. Uh, the new property owner has already contacted us and commenced uh, hiring a cleanup 
a contractor to clean up the property. So the uh, photo that we have uh, now posted, uh, that whole uh, vegetated area should be cleaned up soon. So we're making, we're making some progress. Uh, on the third case, uh, uh, Mr. Stout did some further cleanup, but has not removed uh, the uh, part of the structure yet for the mobile home. And so a, a fine will commence running and we'll be coming back for a non-compliance hearing on that one. Very good. That's all I have. Okay. Um, any public comment for this hearing? Uh, and uh, I'll make one more comment going back to the agenda. Uh, I, I would note that under the early item remarks of the special magistrate was the approval of the minutes from the last hearing. And I'm gonna make some, I want to make some slight modification uh, to those minutes before I actually we actually sign off on them. So just to put that on the record. Okay, uh, any, any others uh, that wish to address the hearing? Okay, we stand adjourned.